while you are running a franchisee model, I think half of your stores right now are uh, franchisees. Uh, and you know, when this product reaches them, there is the frying to be done, etc. How do you control hygiene at those levels? See, again, uh, once the product has reached the store correctly, it's 80% of the battle won. Okay. And then once it has gone into the store, okay, there are deep freezers kept over there. So which, see, once the product is made, you know, it is put into those the trolleys over there and they go in for the, the cooling and the product is brought down to 5 degrees centigrade and then maintained at that. Would one of the big challenges also be the fact that you are dealing with perishables uh, over here? So, uh, what, are, what is that challenge on a day to day basis? See, we got in Johnson Diversity, they are a multinational, 2 billion dollar firm to guide us on the hygiene parameters. Okay. So, uh, they came in and uh, you know kind of explain to us the fact that once the product is made it has to be cooled to 5 degrees within 4 hours okay. now that is the most critical part okay so once this it has got made and the cooling happening in you know 4 hours is what we have to ensure okay. so that, that you know that was by far the most important part of the whole supply chain this winning warrior has ensured he understands every step of his business operations, but he didn't know it all initially. In fact, his first business, a venture called Manali Foods that focused on selling Indian sweets with a longer shelf life, had bombed way back in the 90s. The product we are taking up was Indian traditional mithai. And uh, you know, the challenge was, or the our idea was that we should be able to scale it up the way you know, basically western sweets, which is chocolates have done. Which have a much longer shelf life. Which, yeah, so the technical hitch was that chocolate lends itself to enhancing enhancement of shelf life. But dairy products don't. Sure. So, you know, uh, so whatever you may do, the technology which would have to be employed would make the product too expensive. Mm. There are certain projects which are unviable. That was unviable. And uh, so, you know, uh, from there, you know, what we learned is that the same American concepts can be applied to Indian products. But you have to understand which product to apply it to. So, Vadapa was something which as a product, we could increase shelf life without increasing cost too much. The second time around, Dheeraj hit the jackpot. But here too, there were problems in both operations as well as judgment errors on what could be the next step for the business. It was very difficult to get vendors. Okay. Like this is an outsource facility. So when we told that guy that you have to put in this machine, now each of these machines costs say about 5 lakhs. Okay. So you know he would say that for a volume of 5,000 units, it does not justify. But you give me a volume of 20,000 units a day, yeah. I will put the machine. Yeah. So but at that time, I said that no, you give me the machine today, I will take it up to 20,000 units. Okay. You know, because you have to have a USP that it is a hygienic product. So, you know, that was the toughest battle when, uh, you know, scaling up the whole thing. There was an attempt to go uh, national. Why did that not work out for you? I have been very fortunate to have good mentors all, al all along. And there was this gentleman, uh, you know, who said that you have a fabulous product. And, you know, you can scale Jumbo King to probably 10,000 stores in the country. But the key to this is, you should target growing at about 35% year on year. Okay. So he said, whatever your current base is, you try to do more than that. You'll be taking on more than you can execute. So either you'll spread yourself too thin or your execution will be shabby. Is that what you experienced when you tried launching in Surat? Yes. So what we realized is that for 35% growth, we don't need to go out of Bombay for the next three years. So that's when we said, it's a mistake, accept it, forget all the other cities do just Bombay. Put up 100 stores here and then think of other markets. What are the challenges that you foresee in reaching those 100 stores within Bombay? Jammu King right now is a smooth running machinery. The only challenge will be if we as a company make tactical strategic errors of you know someone like railways coming and telling us you know that I will give you 500 stations and put up a Jammu King store on each one of them and we fall in for that. Okay. and say, wow, 500 stores, let's do it, okay? Because of the fear that if we don't do it, someone else will do it. Yeah. So that is one thing which we have learned, that it's okay, just as long as you are growing at 35%, just concentrate on that. Focus
focus on achieving the set goals. That's perhaps one mantra that's helping Jumbo King grow at 35% every year. The next big hurdle that Dheerat sees is changing Jumbo King's positioning in the market. I think it's very important not to have air conditioning in a Vada Pav outlet because a Vada Pav is something which is taken off the street. Winning Warriors connects Dheeraj to two experts who help him build brand Jumbo King. That's right after this break. In its nine-year existence, Jumbo King has transitioned from serving the poor man's vada pav to a product that young Mumbaikers on the move love. Even as Dheeraj Gupta looks at taking his 36 outlets to 100 in the next three years, he has small and big questions about the positioning of his brand. Winning Warriors connected Dheeraj to two prominent names from the world of brand building, Sunil Alak and Harish Baijul. Well, the greatest challenge that we face today, uh, which we are trying to address, is we want to make Vada Pav cool. As far as uh, making the Vada Pav cooler is concerned, I'm not so clear and I don't know whether he's also very clear on how he wants to position the brand. Positioning is the most important thing as far as a snack is concerned. And I'm not, I'm not fully understanding because he's put it into a hamburger format. And therefore, is he competing with hamburgers or is he competing with the Vada Pav which you get on the street? So unless he's clear in his mind as to what he wants to compete against and then position the product accordingly will make it cooler. And, and otherwise you'll be going all over the place and you'll never be cool because your positioning will be vague. But making the brand look cooler may alienate the average Vada Pav eater. Could there be a way of keeping that consumer hooked? It would be interesting to even redesign the product in terms of the medium that it's fried in. Zero trans fat is a claim that anything that can appropriate, if a Vada Pav can appropriate for itself a zero trans fat kind of a claim, I think it's going to be a healthy item. And young people all said and done want to have healthier lives and I think it's very important for standard items to claim the health connotation as well. We are trying to air condition our stores and uh, you know there is this school of thought which might feel that it is a common man's food so air conditioning is going to make it look expensive the perceived value is going to be that it is going to be expensive you know whether it's a market risk worth taking i think it's very important not to have air conditioning in a vada pav outlet because a vada pav is something which is taken off the street so the more you create and clone the street environment within your outlet the better if he's going to take a bit of a premium pricing, it's better to air condition, give the range that he has got because he has a range of Vada Pavs and get into the competition with burgers. Otherwise, price it low, keep it non-air conditioned and compete with the Vada Pav on the street. Finally, we asked the experts if Dheeraj should be looking at diversifying into other products or attempt once more at taking Jumbo King to cities other than Mumbai. Ensure that the territory you start in and the territory where your ethos is the strongest, uh, you consolidate there. And once you have scale there, I think you should move up. And I think 100 is not scale for Mumbai. Mumbai can take as many as 900 to 1000 Vada Pav counters and that's what I call scale. If you are something, do not diversify. If you are a Vada Pav outlet, remain that. Don't offer 20 different things. Don't also become an idli, a masala idli outlet. I think there's a lot of uh, depth in the thinking that says that, you know, narrow focused branding works much better than wide spectrum branding. With that advice coming in, the road seems pretty set for this winning warrior. Even as his focus remains on reaching the 100 outlets target, Dheeraj has some thinking to do on brand Jumbo King. But that shouldn't be a problem. After all, taking jumbo mistakes, jumbo failures, jumbo success in his stride and looking ahead is a sign of a winning warrior.